Hello everybody, and welcome to Let's Play Professional. Once again, I guess you're wondering why I'm back here trying to not only replay the last scenario but do an AAR on it. Well, um, I did finish this campaign last episode, that's true. I did vanquish Queen Ashfear and eliminated her dark influence, liberated the land, and all these guys were able to survive. Live have to live after. Conrad and Lysa get married. Lysa became queen. Everybody was happy. Uh, she did great. She did very great. So there is no game based on it. Yeah, but then the way I finished off the last scenario uh, was kind of a exploit, kind of cheat. It was well documented exploit uh, using the six Gryphon riders, not even masters, to go around the entire army of Queen Ashvir and attack from back. I mean, it worked. She was easily provoked and didn't hide or anything like that and just tried to take on all six Gryphon riders herself and met her doom. I wonder why, I wonder how she was able to rule the kingdom for long 17 years uh, with that kind of decision making, but yeah, that's what happened. So I just achieved victory that I didn't expect. Kind of felt bad about it. I just wanted to defeat her fair and square. Although, I mean, that was fair and square. I just wanted to withstand her army and see what I can do with the, you know, those units that I have brought on my recall list, all the efforts that I have spent in um, taking care of them, naming them, giving them nicknames and stuff. Yeah, I wanted to make use of them a bit more, maybe try to extend the game a bit and to get the last drop of enjoyment from this otherwise very great experience that I had with this game. So, so I, I mean, seeing this as AAR, I was able to do it, but I guess I would like to just show you how I did it. I'm just kind of interested in the tactics and maybe whether it's a bad strategy. Although I'm not so sure whether I made the all the right decisions but it was quite interesting and at times exciting so you know those who like to maybe defeat Queen Ashbeer on their own may be able to uh, gain a bit of a help or assistance out of this then uh, I'd be yeah definitely it's going to be worth it to make an other episode out of it so this is a bit of bonus content although I haven't really still decided what next game I'm going to be playing I have a few uh, I have narrowed it down to around three or four games, but uh, still I have to learn the ins and outs of it. I, I don't think right now I'd be able to show... I mean, I guess I can record me fumbling and losing every time, but yeah, I still need some practice, so I hope that this kind of acts as a bit of a holdover until that. Alright, so without further ado, let's play. Finish here, said her threat. We responded in kind. Yeah, so what I plan is... Uh, the first turn is to bring all the heavy hitters. Yeah, I have all these uh, guys who could upgrade into level 3. We have that yeah, mainstay of HP, Sponge, Highwayman, Aethid, Dry. And we have the Dramish Lord to serve as a linchpin of our defense for at least a few turns. This scenario is pretty cool in that you gotta play defense for the first few turns. And then move out to try to get to the Queen as quick as possible in an organized manner. And you have the champion with 78 HP, yeah, very nice. And I have moved all the heroes, all the veterans, critical characters up north. So Ruga just captured this um, as a... Well, I don't know whether he's going to hold this you know, after the army had come to face Conrad right here, but yeah, he just captured it just to provide some room for the next few turns. And now the orcs bring their unit, yeah. Riders and level 2 warrior unit, yeah, very formidable. And this guy, human unit, some level 1 horsemen, yeah okay. So these guys are a lancer type so they charge. They can be easily defeated if they miss uh, with a counter attack that causes around I think 100% plus bonus damage. And these guys are pretty Pretty annoying, especially during the day. And level 3 Royal Guard, yeah, these guys were just fearsome during the K 
campaign I just couldn't really face them one on one. I had to do all this song and dance with the um, yeah, with shamans to slow them down first. Didn't really do anything in terms of even trying to defeat them. But we get to have a plenty of opportunity now. And this interesting heavy infantryman, level one, but this guy has a HP of 39 and brings 18 times to mace attack impact. So this guy will do um, I don't know what impact does to uh, current crop up units. They'll be more useful against undead, but you know, I mean during the day at least it brings a hefty punch around 24 or 22. And finally, well not finally, yeah, this guy is all about horses, trying to close the gap as quick as possible, uh, along with the other unit, it's going to make our life very, very interesting, as this guy comes around the time when the next morning arrives, uh, along with the, you know, these guys who would stalk us while the orcs pummel our first line of defense and trying to finish us off. Yeah, so it's going to be a very well-organized attack. Uh, I think the designers have basically put these guys uh, in such a manner that they will at least it will appear that they are doing a coordinated attack. And now, last but not least, Queen Ashbeer with her private army. Heavy infantry, of course. And these guys are very annoying. Yeah, fearless. They can infiltrate our lines. So even if we stagger our guys, with the uh, hex between them. Normally the jungle control will control the flow of the attack against us, but these guys will uh, create havoc and all that. And this guy um, is first introduced in the test of clans or the one before that, I guess return to Westnoth as reinforcement unit. And these guys are really fearsome. Um, even without the day, you know, actually now, right now it's day, so they have all the damage bonus here but then yeah you can see that it's 24 times 2 here so it's really fearsome and 19 times 3 which is basically their normal attack pierce and first strike the first strike as you can see the unit always strikes first even in defensive mode Elias are with her leadership provides this effect on the unit around her yeah these guys are veritable tanks they're the best unit I think in this campaign of course you can use them. And dragons are also very annoying. They can do 1 times 15 crossbow attack. Although they don't have a charge, so that's a plus. Compared to uh, cavalrymen here, level I think, yeah, cavalier? No. Cavalier is level 3 version of the dragons. They are even more fearsome, 25 times 1, causing a lot of trouble for us. Now the cavalrymen um, level 2, I think it's called knight or no, lancers? Lancers to make um, charge attacks. I don't think I see lancers here. Only knight and horsemen. Um, yeah, so I guess we are spared that because they will make our life a whole lot, whole lot more difficult because of the charge attacks will just finish off. Not only the grunt that I can bring in as a bit of a a support unit, but also these kind of guys. 59. The maximum damage yeah, they can inflict it upon us is done by, I think, a Lancer. Potentially has the ability to inflict around, I think, 96 or something? It's something insane. But yeah, they can do that with three charges. Anywho, let's continue on. So I did space out the dwarves here and then the heavy units. As you can see, and bring in some magic users and some uh, archers for some reason. I need to bring some healers, of course, to support the line. And as you can see, the line forming around our keep. You know, something that I have to do because this is only the only area where I have any semblance of, I guess, bonus or advantage against attacking unit, seeing that this is a keep and provides bonuses just like 60% for the dwarves and the elves and yeah 60% for all the units inside the keep so I'm just hoping for a bit more misses alongside the main uh, central area of our line while trying to keep adding to the 
uh, flanks here to prevent the units from uh, poking through. The dwarves are dwarves are punishing themselves here. Yeah, or a line. So is this guy champion is going to fill up around here, and Lysar is preparing to support the dwarves. I don't know where the father is going to go, but probably going to end up around here. And Connor is of course uh, by default supporting the guys in the keep. Yeah, orcs are now coming. Yeah, they do have a bit of an interesting, um, they have an interesting path that they take, uh, perhaps to meet up with the humans and attack in a coordinated fashion, or they felt that this area was a bit weaker than the, you know, the mass of dwarves now uh, in their closest vicinity. Let's see how the humans do. Yeah, humans just charge across the open field with the cavalrymen leading the way. And they brought some extra units, as you can see. More loyal guards and dragoons, level 2 units. Yeah, they have horsemen, but they don't have the lancers. Some heavy damage, but not as much. Alright. Yeah, so these guys are charging in, in all directions. They travel around 8 to 9, or even 10 hexes per turn, so yeah, they're definitely close to the gap. And finally, Kanesh Beer's army. Yeah, Beer is definitely going to meet us. And brings in more units. As you can see, one more Herbert here, I believe, yeah, and three lawyer, three, two level three lawyer guards and more duelists. So yeah, she's not kidding around. It's going to be very, very difficult if they reach all at once. Yeah, we set up the healers, yeah. Um, and bring in some more units, more healers, and now uh, Avengers are appearing. Saruga makes a decision to turn back and stay in the back of the line that has now been formed. Yeah, so this is our defensive line. This is going to be the line that we are going to hold for dear life um, until we exhaust their troops. And bring in some more healers to support the guys and to maybe even rotate the injured troops from the front or back where they can be healed. Bring the Paladin, yeah, Gwegwin, the unit that has been with us for a long time. And Bell also um, is a sharpshooter, level 3 sharpshooter. Now I think I made a mistake here by placing Wormamu, the Mage of Light, in the south. He could have been placed here to meet the, the orcs, weak to his field of light. He is going to be at a disadvantage, yeah, regardless of the time of the day, so I should have placed him more closer to the orcs instead of down here, but I felt that this guy has HP of 50 and we'll be able to survive some of the attacks uh, from the human, more robust human troops while providing healing uh, for the marshal here that provides leadership also, so these guys will do some good work in synergy. This guy is providing healing, this guy providing uh, some leadership. And the units, yeah, Avengers are finally here. So some of these units will be just facing them head on and not going to be in a good position. If I was smart enough, smarter, I would have placed the um, uh, sharpshooters here. I don't know what I'm going to do. But let's see what I'm going to be doing in the few turns after. Now the orc has arrived and has slowed down the dwarf, still clad. Yeah, they're producing no more troops now, so that's a relief. So two waves of troops is all they bring, it seems, at least in the normal difficulty. These guys are now gearing for our... this side, this flank, uh, our left flank. Going to be charging in with the carryman first, along with the orc that might slow us down, and follow up with the... Uh, melee attacks from these guys, although this guy might come... I guess this guy's will be blocked from fighting our troops until it's night. Because I believe that these guys will survive until the day is over. Yeah, so look at all these troops coming in. Thankfully they don't bring in more troops, but then Ashbeer has different ideas. Yeah, they are splitting forth, joining the rest of the Ashbeer's group. 
The level 3 guys are the fastest, I guess. No, level 2 dragon has 10 movement points, which is definitely faster than the cavalier. Although this might be... Yeah, this might be a quick unit, so normally they have 9 movement points. Alright, so duelist is coming. And the fearsome cover there, man. Yeah, definitely. So next turn we're going to be fighting multiple units, but first of all, I need to take care of this guy. And bringing more units to fill the gaps. Yeah, as you can see, I do it with a couple of dwarves here and huntsmen. Sorceress um, to provide some magic to slow these guys down and sometimes even defeat them uh, using the magic attack that against those guys who might not be able to attack back. And I brought Archmage, the loyal guy that I have liquidated from the Isle of Aldwin, I think. Yeah, so this guy has been with us for a long time and finally he's going to help us in the last mission as well. So yeah, I do think that it's pretty cool to you know, bring in all these units that I have brought up into the final foray and see how well they do. Not to attack. I just hope to wait until more of these guys come and then we can do something about it. Mostly the orcs have arrived to take advantage of the night. And spreading out across the main line. I do believe that because they don't want to get blocked by these guys. So they're trying to you know, spread out um, to attack us on all fronts. They're not giving us any pause. And these guys are now taking just in time for uh, night to make their attacks a bit weaker, so that's nice. Everyone now comes all the way from the southwest. Now they have a turn of travel until they meet us. Some of these guys take a bit of an interesting pathway, like this guy, uh, which crossed I think two bridges to arrive here. Although the rest of the group is around here. A lot of these guys will be blocked and then just waiting their turns to have a go at Unred. Waiting for the unit in front of them to bite the dust. They do leave a lot of strain on the initial uh, defensive line. As you can see, some of these guys are poisoned and down half their health, even though these guys are not supposed to be at their strongest. So they might have to be rotated back because I do want to have at least a chance to attack back and it's going to be harder with those units that are damaged. Yeah, pretty scary stack of doom coming along right now. Yeah, now it's night. So that's what I do. I do shoot the horses. Okay, so it works. It works pretty nicely. Wow, that was pretty cool. It's one attack deal, but when you connect with Conrad's leadership, it does definitely a lot of damage, like 42. And then these guys move back so that I can bring in more and more unit. Yeah, so the... Unfortunate that I have to bring this guy out in the open, uh, away from Conrad's... Uh, yeah, Conrad's leadership. I should have just placed this guy around here and then attack this guy. But I just wanted to bring in more units, so I had to push some of these guys out, and my money was running out, so I had to bring in as many units as possible that I can. I guess I just pushed this guy out into the foray. 40% uh, defensive bonus. I don't think it's going to be enough against the orcs, so let's see what happens to this guy. And I brought a Gryphon Rider. Um, I think this is a mistake. I should have brought uh, at least the Gryphon Master that I had in my recall list. I think I used just a slip of a finger. But yeah, he's going to get involved in fight. And I bring Uncle Sof, yeah. So another high HP guy. Almost, well not really almost, but still has some experience. So I can even hope for this guy to turn into a... Uh, turn into Highwayman from a bandit. The dwarves are providing some good defense. And some nice counter attack when it matters. And uh, yeah, I did put this guy's back, rotate this guy's back so they can get healed. Yeah, these guys are now going to make a huge damage against our frontlines, especially the orcs. 
Yeah, wow. Well, some of these guys miss, thankfully. Yeah, it's a lot of attrition now. They're bringing their human unit, um, despite the time of day, to just put pressure on every unit. I think this horseman unit will try to attack here. Yeah, which is basically the only open space on the defensive line. And they did a pretty good job here, yeah. Uh, but then the defense won the day. It's uh, death by a lot of different attacks. You know, paper cut, I guess, a thousand times. This guy already is on the verge of being upgraded. It's a level 1 unit, and it just defeated, I guess, level 3 Avenger. So I need to quickly uh, reinforce that unit to go up against all these horse units. Pretty fearsome, despite the time of day. So now, yeah, the Drillist has taken over and is providing a further nuisance. Going to be trouble. Over your man senses our weakness and has north. Yep. A lot of training going on. This guy got healed by 10, thankfully, because has healthy attribute which allows it to heal uh, by two even with the action that it has taken normally you need to heal two points of health if it doesn't move at all within the turn Jaime man finishes the horseman from north i think the wow okay so yeah this guy's a wonderful work here couldn't finish the early stuff, unfortunately. The Kibi is providing us with a really good defense. Now the dwarves uh, from the back are coming out to fill up the gap. And so is the Paladin. And yeah, brought in some riders here. I don't know why, but this could be a unit that could provide us with some bow units. And also some mobility. Yeah, so you can quickly go back if it's hurt or fill the space if there is one and I think the druid wanted to weaken this guy but was not able to thankfully it's nice so that's why it's not able to attack really well but it has still 5 attacks uh, they can inflict and this guy came out uh, in order to face all these guys I don't know I mean, this guy's hardy against um, against different types of attacks but I don't think that's Something that I should be looking forward to. Because this guy surely will get attacked. Being the weakest unit in the line. And then Marshall is probably some good leadership, although I think not be able to do it for Gwegwin. Or this guy, so I should have brought in more um you know level one unit or the units with the level less than three to gain that benefit, but I was kind of getting worried about uh, this guy's breaking through and attacking more Momo and these are human units so I think they will be benefited from being in the light so I need to really do an emergency procedure to defend them. Finally um, don't have a lot of money so brought in some grunt, a level 1 archer. Hopefully they will be able to survive and get full benefit from being the keep. Yeah the trolls have been very, yeah trolls are very effective in this scenario. They only bring one, but it can bring in, uh, it can bring a whole lot of damage that really connected a lot of times to provide support for these guys to finish the hurt unit. So that's a concern, and this guy, yeah, definitely doing very well for the orcs during the night. Being attacked a lot of times, but I think this guy holds, yeah, definitely holds, and Gwagwin gets damaged a whole lot. I guess the Dragon Guard does pretty well in defending using the dagger. Matching the guard slash by slash. Gutsy performance. And now you can see the lines here. Yeah, it's pretty cool how they actually form a line to crash into our um, defensive line. As the first attacks have phased out, they can poke through and you know, launch skirmish attacks in order to probe our weak point and then burst through uh, using these guys. 
as an exclamation point. And these guys have not been in action for some time. I think they're trying to attack us in droves, in mass. And these guys are all waiting until the night is over. And Queen Ashbeer bringing further units. This time it's level 1 heavy infantryman and the level 2 bowmen. They don't have any level 3 bowmen, but they can definitely upgrade during the fight. Okay, let's see. Yep, she brought another duelist. Goodness. Yeah, champion doing really well. Yeah, matching the royal guard. A lot of healing. But Gregor needs to probably move back. And so is this guy. Let's see what happens. Yeah, Dervish Lord definitely serving as a linchpin in the defense. Finally, I bring in some units that can get benefit from the leadership. Yeah, so I brought the knight. No, so Ruga. So Ruga definitely takes charge now. Yeah, missed a couple of times, but still damaged them a whole lot. Okay, so attacks all along the line. Even the Ravish Rider gets into the action. Yeah, I get 60% of defense, unlike the Knight here, so I guess I did make a good decision bringing these guys. At least because this guy is a bit of a unique horse unit, only horse unit to ever gain any kind of defensive bonus. The rest of it is around 40%. Some of these guys are poisoned, of course needs to get healed. By the healers that stay in the back and same goes for these guys. We we'll need to move around in order to make use of the resources that we have. And up here, yeah, we have done a really good job in defending against the horsemen. Um, I don't know whether some of these units will last to see the next turn. But this is our taking turn, so that's what I do. No, it's not our taking turn. Yeah, Lysa are providing that first strike defense. Unfortunately, dies. But I'm really good job though, going up against 3 units. Yeah, my sharpshooter is done for. Unfortunately because of this troll, I'm taking really well. Yeah. Uh, connecting with a lot of its attacks. My goodness, yeah, that really sucked but survived. I like to think that Kip was able to provide some defensive bonus, so that the archer was able to survive and gain some experience in the meantime, but I mean, it's not really that much. Now uh, it's horse's turn to do it, and the dragon just shot Iron Man, so he's almost dead. Luckily he was able to survive the charge. And lastly, the Queen Ashbeer's horse comes forth and breaks into our line here. Yeah, definitely damaging us a whole lot. A lot of healing going on. Yeah, so um, I saw Ruga now taking charge, which is yeah going to be exposing him to a lot of different elements here, different units. But some of these attacks he'll be able to withstand, especially the blade and the impact attack. So mostly they try to avoid Sir Ruga, which brings huge amount of defenses, defensive attack, because. Um, yeah, especially against the horseman because he can do 42 times two lance attack. So that's uh, really fearsome, and has a huge HP pool as well. Gregor is hurt, so he needs to get healed up. I need to rearrange the troops. And some of these guys have been healed up, I think, or is just waiting for their turn to move up and attack. There's a hole in the line here, so let's see what I do to counter this duelist, which is going to be. Giving us a lot of trouble and has a huge evasion uh, rating. Alright, let's see what I do here. Wow, yeah, Dravish Lord definitely does really well, and yeah, Saruga so follows up with huge attacks. And this kind of sucks. Sorry. Marjo was just praying that he could finish off that duelist, but even with four attacks, was not able to do it. And this guy turned into a Dorvish Lord himself. Nice. Yeah, I'm kind of getting desperate here in the north, trying to rearrange all the units so that they can heal up as quick as possible. Paladin providing some healing, but it's not going to be enough because he can only heal 4 a turn. 
and a druid goes up I did manage to weaken this guy and I think I did it because um, I do have units here providing little protection on her flank and this guy will not be able to do much damage since I slowed him down so this was a bit of an emergency kind of uh, maneuver I don't want to get I don't want to get this unit exposed in any way but sometimes uh, if you have uh, access to only one unit then I guess it's a worthwhile thing to do and yeah frankly I wanted to give some of these other guys in the back a chance to move up and and this guy um, has defended pretty well but now it's almost at the end of its limit this guy might as well finish this guy weakest unit and all these horse units are there to provide additional attacks yeah these guys can travel anywhere um, along the line in order to um, exploit our weakness so it's a pretty dangerous unit especially with the charging effect which kind of uh, I mean it's balanced by that it only does charge attacks Attacking these guys, it has a better chance of missing than connecting with any of its shots and it happened uh, once or twice already. I don't think was I able to finish some of these units that were able to survive with just a sliver of each life. This guy's manning the fort pretty well. And Darfada did really well. 70% lightning attack against this guy, but unfortunately Marshall wasn't able to do anything. Uh, instead it wasted, I think, almost half of its health in trying to attack this guy in no avail. Yeah, hit a whole lot. I think it got hit like 28, yeah, 28. So he got four times, was not able to land even a single one of its attacks. Yeah. Not a martial material. Uh, Grand Knight will have to do something here to provide some good defense alongside the Dwarvish Lord. Which lost almost half its health. A pretty good job though, was able to finish the bowman I believe and uh, yeah, doing a really good job. Right now, oh wow, okay, so he was able to survive there, but I guess that's pretty cool. Yeah, they miss once again, but the champion also misses a whole lot. That pretty hurt. Wow, that really sucked. And so champion falls. Thankfully it was not from a, oh okay, yeah, I lose another unit there. Yeah, thankfully level 1 unit was, I mean, this guy was able to finish him. So even though he got a whole lot of experience points, it was not like if a level 1 unit gets enough experience to upgrade. Such as this guy, he definitely could have upgraded itself. So I guess it's a bit of silver lining in the really critical situation now in the north. Um, because I don't have a um, unit that could provide additional healing. Uh, Lysar is manning this area, so does a better, a better job of commanding our forces here. And Silver Mage was not able to do anything right now, so is the Archmage. So I guess I made a mistake of not bringing in a more uh, direct dealers, uh, damage dealers. I uh, have to wait until some of these guys are thinned out. Well, you know, they provide some magic attacks, so some potent magic attacks for this guy. And this guy really, well, I mean, does have a higher HP and can bring in magic missiles and also teleportation, although that ability is not really used here. The south, yeah, uh, south really didn't, didn't really change much except for the drill is right now threatening. Brings in more units. Yeah, the average slider is finished, so wow. Heredia man finally attacks and it makes a yeah a huge attack against that shite. Could have finished her off, but fortunately didn't use the first attack, used the second attack. It went for damage instead of one more attack against the shite. So shite was able to breathe a yeah was able to survive for one more turn. And these guys are tanks, 75. Yeah, he's going to stay here for a long while. Dealing damage is left and right, making our lives really basically become the focus of our defensive force. Um, just throwing ourselves into defeating these guys. But then, yeah, let's see what happens because still have plenty of troops back here. Now, some of these guys are still getting healed. Wow, yeah. Now, bring the white mage here to accelerate the process a bit. 
Yeah, not a lot of units that are of health that could withstand some of these guys' attacks. Although, um, I do have plenty in the back here in the reserve, and I have brought a knight here. I think finally, so I don't have any units to bring in anymore. Or was it the last turn? I think it was the last turn that I brought the final battery unit, and these guys will be serving as a bit of a uh, reserve unit, especially the knight here. He move around pretty quickly. Finally, I finished the duelist off. Yeah, it shouldn't have taken that long. So we should lower finish this guy off, and can I finish off that loyal guard? Okay, good. So I do um, manage to weaken the herbardier man, the herbardier. And attack it with Grunt so as not to suffer too much damage. I uh, don't want to lose any uh, experience units I could use down the road. So these guys we can can also it can still bring nine times three and twelve times two. So it's almost as if I'm facing a troll with an extra attack option. Now speaking of troll, I think I finished him in the last turn. So yeah, good riddance. It only brings one troll in, thankfully. Yeah, so a bit of a hole in our line now, um, as you can see um, around here. And this is rather weak point here, uh, with the druid now uh, exposed by these two horsemen units, might have to move him back. And then Lysar kind of take charge of things in attacking them directly. Yeah, nice evasion. Thankfully, the kid is working its magic in providing a strong central area. Or our defense and all the while Conrad is providing some leadership especially for these guys these two guys right yeah the worry is finished and now the evil phrase my worst fears are realized um, still poison but has to fight and champion withstands one attack but cannot do it for the second attack so now there's another hole yeah, losing a lot of units, losing a lot of units, and need to bring in some reserves, although they might not be of full health. Uh, Dorvish Lord finally, yeah, he's making his way up to the Paladin in order to get healed. Um, Harbor Demon damaged him a lot, so that's why I had to move him back. Don't want to lose him right now if I have the chance to still heal him and then uh, make him, you know, a bit of a defensive presence. Uh, in the still holding line, but now a bit crumbling on the edges. With all these subunits facing the full wrath of this heavy, yeah, unit. Um, so it's pretty worrying here. I don't know how I will able to counter attack. Let's see what I do. Oh, okay, still I need to <laughs> finish. I need to finish. Uh, oh my goodness, yeah. A uh, really big loss here. More Mumu dies because of the three three attacks landed against him. So yeah, more troubles. More troubles coming up for us. And now, finally, our keep has been infiltrated by this bowman, who makes a really good attempt at the bowman here. Um, so we are now being stressed and being squeezed from all directions, from north to south. And most pressing worry is with these two average ladies now trying to hold back against yeah, crazy Herbardier man now getting a full um, range of its abilities back. And the knight is approaching, so, so these orcish guys will be very difficult to get rid of, especially the assassin, which may have a really good evasion rating akin to the duelist. All these guys are hurting. And Wormu has, has succumbed to injuries because of the multiple attacks by these herbardiers. I think I uh, was able to land 15 times 3 straight. Yeah, so even though I was thinking about whether I should brought more Momo here, it didn't make any difference because, I mean, against Herbert Deer Man, didn't really have any chance. If I brought this guy here, he would have been faced up with this guy. And then uh, Orc is now out of, it's not our main concern, although this guy might be, uh, still be a bit of a thorn in our side. If Momo would have stayed here, he would have just been ransacked by these guys anyways and it doesn't really matter whether it's day or night he's going to get damaged and i guess if he missed only once then he might be able to still fight on but uh, it, it was too late so we're getting basically lambasted from the flank 
uh, and then he's in danger of being routed there. So yeah, it's a pretty big problem. Let's see if I can make any adjustment. Okay, finish the orc before the knight arrives. So I do tend to uh, focus on the weakest unit and the dragon guard does a lot of good attacks there. And finally the archmage moves and finishes off the guy. And the uh, archery against horsemen, yeah, definitely works well. Throw the Gryphon Rider against the Herbert Man. Yeah, does a pretty good attack. And now uh, Conrad brings in the fire attack, defeats that intruder, and fill up with the uh, level 1 archer. Okay, so I guess I did, did manage to get the line hold and not retreat back or anything like that. I try to bring in some of the units in the reserve from the back to the front, although some of these guys are uh, still rather vulnerable. But I did manage to fill it in the line. Yeah, so let's see what happens. The Dwarvish Lord definitely holds a fort. And his uh, yeah, main defensive presence here, trying to draw in some of the attacks from the Bowman, definitely is going to attack the poor Dwarvish Lord. So I don't know whether he's going to survive uh, the next barrage of arrows from these guys. Huntsman is ready for the night, and this guy is providing some good presence with its full health. Marshall providing some defense, of course. This guy is almost being upgraded, although I don't know, Herbert Your Man might try to seek extra weaker units to swing its Herbert Your around. And this guy is definitely in danger of being routed by the Pierce attacks from this guy. Yeah, definitely has the chance of being killed off. Gregorin is now finally being um, ready to repay some of these guys on the front or or to fill in uh, when uh, there's some losses that happen along this line. The father is still waiting. Um, just to have access to this area if some of these decides to infiltrate this and then uh, have a go at the Marshall. So Marshall, I like him to survive, of course, providing some leadership other unit and this guy has been really steady steady uh, presence yeah has been a really steady guy providing some uh, shock defensive tactics here against the uh, would-be attackers yeah, definitely gain a lot of experience okay yeah so I'm taking the dwarf and to pick apart the weakest unit so we're gonna get arrowed okay which is, I guess, pretty good. Oh yeah, the Royal Guard finishes the guy off, and now Duelist does the same thing, and then finishes the Marshal. So there's no Marshal, Marshal's lost. Yeah, the Duelist guy definitely does well. He has a huge amount of... Wow. Yeah, Herbert your man just... Yeah. Made a mincemeat out of the Archer, despite being in the keep. It was not a really lucky day for that Archer. Knight arrives, so these guys are kind of weak, but still brings in 12 times 3 and... 15 times 2 attacks. Yeah, so we need to really finish them off as quick as possible. And still all of them are surviving, which is... Thankfully this guy only got damaged uh, by I think one of its attacks. Survived, thankfully. Yeah, so we are kind of thinning out in the front. Uh, kind of getting damaged from all the place. And this guy will not survive the night, so I have to move him back. Rotate. And possibly it's time for cannons or Lysar to take charge. And yeah, for the attacking forces as well, they're kind of thinning out, so it's kind of, kind of, uh, depends on what happens with the RNG, um, the fate of this army now hangs in balance. So let's see how I make most use of this. I mean, Huntsman will do a pretty good job here, I'm sure of it. Yeah, Daffodor is like a duelist specialist now. Yeah, the Dwarvish Lord moves back. Oh my goodness. The entrance gains a huge load of experience from defeating the Herbert Deer Man for the first time. And same goes for the Avenger. Does a really good job. Finally, I was able to defeat the, all the Herbert Deer Man. So I don't know whether Dark Queen is going to bring in additional Herbert Deer Man, but I think that's it. So most of the heavy infantry now lies in ruins. And we have this. Yeah, I mean, we, we have a. Uh, we have defeated a whole lot of them and now now we can sort of think about how to do a counter-attack and even try to get out of the 
defensive line in attacking Kin Rishbeer. Yeah, some of these guys are all... I mean, this guy's orc, but then these guys are all kind of weakened by the knight. And this guy will not be able to arrive in time to support the rest of the uh, line that are now fast shrinking. And the steel clad, and this guy has done an amazing job. Probably a lot of defensive and offensive attacks uh, to try to fend these guys off. And certainly the HP helped. And Uncle Soft, I don't know whether he was able to attack anybody. He did, and um, yeah, he's almost at the level up. Okay. Still the Orcish has to attack. And some of these guys are getting healed. Uh, this guy, for example. The Huntsman being attacked, although I don't know whether it's going to be enough. Saruga getting hit by the Dragon's arrow attack. The Royal Guard, only one left. Not be able to finish the Dwarf. Okay, the Dwarf survives. The Archer, yeah. I wonder how many units I lost. I think I lost around like 20 so far. Okay, so some nice attacks on the periphery. Huntsman does a really good job, of course. Yeah, Gwegwin finishes the Bowman. Bowman kind of weak against the horse attacks, definitely. Although he can fend the horseman off with its pierce attacks. Okay. Yeah, finally the Dragon Guard gets out and then is greeted by this charge attack. Got hurt to the tune of around, I think, 14 I guess, but then yeah, still still doing pretty well. Yeah, definitely done a really good job in defending. Silver Mage coming out to throw some magic missiles. And in the north, we are basically free. We can even hope to advance a bit and get rid of this guy as quick as possible. In the south, I uh, still have to get rid of some of these guys, but then, yeah, with this amount of troops, uh, many of them are hurting, but they'll be able to recover. And the rest of these guys with their father supporting and yeah, with the Silver Mage, we'll be able to do some good work uh, in the next turn. First of all, Queen Spear still brings in some units. The Bowman and the uh, level 2 Dragon, so need to watch out still. Yeah. Really an angel of bowmen, so. So Ruga, wow, yeah, he's been amazing so far. I wonder what happened if I was able to convince one additional, um, I guess, horse clan lord to our cause. It might have been very, very nice, especially in the north where it would have brought some nice attacks against the uh, orcish guys, orcish crossbowmen, and, and the like. But still, one um, Grand Knight was able to do pretty well in trying to even even just providing zone of defense because some of these units, I mean, most of these units do not want to face up against this guy, um, probably because it's 12 times 4 longsword attack. So these guys kind of try to go around the knight and has a funneling effect of you know getting these guys to a place where we want them to be. Although he's not here with us, the Marshal back Dwarves, for example, would have been pretty... I mean, I did probably use that to a pretty good effect, but then, yeah, some of the Dwarves that we started with are all gone. Uh, one of them have, I think, this guy? Yeah, this guy is almost dead, but this guy is actually a upgraded version. Yeah, from Steel Clad, so he still survives. Yeah, but then Saruga definitely did a good job. Still surviving, still, yeah, very much thriving here in the battlefield, in the open battlefield. And now, uh, is it time for Conrad to move out? Let's see. Okay, the Dragon Guard finally misses. He's only used to defending, not really attacking. The yeah, Archmage losing some health, but taking a whole lot of the hit points away. Finished by the Enchantress. Uh, well, Sorceress before, but now it's Enchantress. And the Mage is doing a pretty good job, yeah. Finally, we move out of our keep. So, Enchantress, the upgraded version of Sorceress. So, finally, I got level 3 Mage, Elvish Mage. Brings in some good attacks, but most of this is the uh, upgraded version of the attacks that 
the sorceress already had. So it upgrades by around 2 for the fairy fire main source of attack. And also for the staff, uh, only 1 for entangle. Yeah, brings in some nice magical abilities here. And it has a, yeah, I mean, it says has high chance of hitting an opponent, around 70%, I believe. Then sorceress already had magical property uh, for each fairy fire. One big thing is I think it has 50 HP compared to 41, so it's a pretty good boost. Although um, here she only has 48. Destroy and quick, yeah, very nice. Very nice combination. And I wonder uh, at what point of our campaign did you bring this unit? Yeah, it definitely has stayed us for a long time. Has seen the ups and downs of a campaign. Yeah, okay, so this guy is almost upgraded. Let's see if I can make it to uh, level 3. Uh, I think level 3 is called Dragon Guard. Yeah, Dragon Guard. But I have already seen what kind of attacks that Dragon Guard can do because uh, of Conrad's leadership providing hefty uh, boost to each attack. Yeah, 42, 40 times 1. So if it was uh, upgraded by it or boosted by Conrad's leadership, it could have brought in. Well, I mean, by then. Level is going to be the equal, so I don't think Connor is able to provide any leadership, but still, um, I've seen like 45, you know, damage attacks done against the uh, attackers, against horsemen, for example. And particularly because uh, this is pierce attack, so I guess the horsemen got damaged by a bit more, well, a lot more. Yeah, by 20% more, so yeah, we've seen like figures like 45 or something, yeah, that was pretty crazy. All right, so we are moving out. Let's see if uh, Queen Ashbeer can bring enough troops. I mean, all the other guys are tapped out. I mean, Queen Ashbeer is pretty greedy, so as not to provide any resources for these guys to bring in more effective units, such as the um, I don't know what did they bring, Royal Guard or something, against us. So they are basically uh, speed bumps or traffic cone around which we have to navigate to face the Dark Queen. Although, I mean, this guy might have to uh, fight us because he's in the way. Then the closest to us. So we make a bit of move here. Yeah, just measure move so as not to face him directly and still continue to heal the troops that still need some healing. Oh, well, there are a lot of units that need some healing. Yeah. The Serum Mage getting some action finally. That was a pretty good job defending. Yeah, capturing some villages here. I don't know what that does. Yeah, weakening them and giving them no quarter. Pretty nice formation here. Okay, so still, I uh, need some healers to heal a lot of units. Uh, Paladin still does yeah, some healing, so I brought in brought some Dwarvish Lord here. To get healed, and some of them are healthy, so he'd get healed a bit more. Yeah, this Irish Rider survived, um, has a huge range of movement. So Ruga still survived, yeah, along with this guy. Okay. Wow, bring some heavy infantrymen and also a dragoon, so it's not over yet. The question is whether the Dark Queen is going to, you know, abandon her post and not opt to surround herself with defensive units around her keep. That's going to make our you know, attacks um, a lot easier, of course. You can provoke the queen and I think given the precedence of her just jumping uh, into the foray of six Gryphon riders and throwing her life into immediate ruin by doing that, I think maybe I can just hope that she'll be doing that also. Um, and when one of these advanced units poke through to where she feels her domain is being violated. Yeah, the other provokes that general in the south. Okay, so the heroes now take charge. The rest of the unit can rest a bit and provide some support and that's it. Yeah, wow, okay. So that really gained him a lot of experience points. 
Yeah, wow. Almost there. Yeah, so, as you can see, doing really good now, uh, advancing slowly but surely toward Dark Queen. The thing is whether she's going to jump ahead and then attack us. I mean, thankfully she has a pretty good movement point. So she's been exercising or something or using magic to get around. But yeah, if she's if she has a pretty good range of movement, which means that she can be provoked from uh, farther away from the rest of her troops. And we react a bit quicker. Okay, so General definitely comes out. Um, doing her service for the for Ashvir and obviously uh, this is basically the magnet for the enemy being the highest value unit on the field right now so I guess instead of opting for a weaker unit she could have gone for this guy but I guess he calculated that this is a less defensive bonus I don't want to face the Alphodor's uh, staff here and I did manage to get him provoked or get him outside of his keep during um, dusk so yeah further disadvantage for the guy the other unit really do not move except for Kuneshvir's guards a lot of healing going on yeah I'll cost off okay this is some health but ancient trace does a really good job of weakening this guy further and huntsman finishes him off using the cover of night to bring in some good damage Yeah, so the general is finished. I wonder if I can get to the other leaders as well, although I don't believe that I can get to him in time. Um, I wonder why he doesn't move. Uh, he should be definitely be moving to support her, support his queen. Uh, okay, interestingly enough, he's, yeah, he took up shop here, defending. Uh, although I do believe that this is enough to take care of this guy. Uh, but then I don't want to move. Too quickly, lest this guy brings in the Wrath of its Grey Sword against us. Yeah, 157 damage. Definitely able to finish this guy. Yeah, I don't want to do that. So we just want him to stay in the keep until the morning. Alright, so finish here now has to. She brings in a bowman. Heavy infantryman cannot travel that fast, so. I think we will just wait or even pull back a bit in the north. Let's see what we do. Alright, yeah. Bring the full might of his fire attacks, scepter of fire attacks. The Thunder Guard misses. Archmage follows up with some missing uh, fire attacks. Yeah, it's a death by Southern Cut once again for this poor dragon. Yeah, finally, the Clive finishes him off. Now, third Drawbridge Lord might come into play. In the south, we have no inhibitions and just march ahead, uh, trying to provoke the queen here. We're almost there. Okay. Right. Heavy infantryman goes up against Conrad, but it's not enough. Yeah, I didn't even touch the. Uh, I didn't even touch this guy. Just waiting for the day uh, before we do anything. Uh, we did a pretty good job against the dragon here, although we. Took a long time to finish him off. And the bowman. Kong is losing a bit of health, so we need to take care of that also. Yeah. Yeah, leadership provided another third Dwarish Lord to come into play. It was either him or the Dragon Guard, but I chose the Steel Clad to level up. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, three Dwarish Lord. I think there's one, two, three. Just in time for Conrad to provide the leadership. Yeah. And now we're in the vicinity of uh, Weldon. Yeah, Weldon itself. So let's see if the queen gets provoked. Although she can recall some troops and be done with that. Stay in her keep. And even bring in some of these guys to help her. But I guess by this time, they have their own issues to work out. Yeah, they don't move an inch. Yeah. Alright, so Asher brings in two bowmen. And she gets provoked as you can see. Yeah. You can, you can see that she gets provoked very easily. And we need to think about how to finish her off. Um, and as you can see, um, well, I mean, we just stay now so we can attack the Orcish Master also, or Warlord also. But now the prime target is Ashbeer. See how we, uh, how we deal with her. First, we move these guys to attack. And 
Yeah, pretty good attacks here. Yeah. yeah. Pretty good attacks. And so Gwigwin attacks first. It's pretty cool because he's a paladin and it's a really I mean he's basically a lieutenant of our army. Uh, now that Mormon unfortunately has succumbed uh, in battlefield, so yep, he says that same um, same memorable line, take this witch. And I start finishes off. Yeah, so uh, the daughter finishes the mother off. Like, I don't know, Luke Skywalker uh, going up against Darth Vader, although, I mean, that time, Darth Vader by then uh, had a bit of a ambivalent feelings toward the whole Sith business, so it was just out of, um, I don't know, there's probably some other things underneath that might be at work there. But then here, yeah, I guess a bit of a sympathy for Lysar when she drew the blade against the Dark Queen, but still, it's her mother, so there's a special dialogue that happens. Yeah, mother, I swore to end your reign of evil, and now I shall. I wonder what Connie would have said. Probably not as poignant as this scene. Ashbeer, uh, looking up at her daughter, I mean, she doesn't get too damaged here, only uh, her arm seems to be bleeding or something, but she can still survive. But she's she's done. I mean, negative five. She's probably bleeding on the ground, seeing her final lines. The other I built this kingdom for you, it has all been for you. Yeah, so that's what she says to justify all the evil that she has done. And Lysar abandons her after fire says, even now, can you not tell the truth? Your greed has corrupted your soul. You're a monster, murderous. Uh, it pains me to kill you, mother, but you have chosen your fate for Westnoth. Okay, well, that's that. Lysar basically takes the kingdom by her own hand. Um, finishing off her mother in the last attack that I do in this battle. I was kind of wondering whether she's going to miss, but yeah, I mean, 13 times 4 in the open field. It was whether. It was pretty much sealed that she's going to be able to land at least one hit. Um, she was down to like help like seven or something, and she was able to finish her in one stroke. Yeah, so that's what happens. I think maybe this might be considered a true ending. Um, I don't know. Maybe Conrad could have done that. Uh, if a special dialogue might have come up, even Dalfather could have um, finished Dark Queen with his lightning attacks and say something interesting. But yeah, I think this is. I don't know, maybe this is could be considered a true ending, I don't know. But definitely uh, from the last attempt at doing this with the Gryphon Riders, uh, definitely more uh, fitting end to the campaign. So yeah, that's it. Lysa strikes a killing bow and she dies. Everybody gains a full health, I think. No, not really. And yeah, definitely says the same thing. You'll be queen. Cannon's has definitely been more involved in the battle now and they can say uh, his line, so much blood, so much death a lot of units have been lost um, yeah, so that's it folks this is how I survived the Queen's army Queen's army's onslaught on the rebel army that we brought in from the very beginning of this campaign and um, how I was able to withstand them although there have been some losses yeah, and finish this campaign. Um, I guess fair and square. Yeah, without using so much of an exploit using the Gryphon Riders. It have been uh, considered a brilliant victory, I guess, if that was done in the first attempt without even knowing about it. But I knew about the tactic and I wanted to try whether I, my uh, current army was up to snuff to withstand the you know, final challenge. And I mentioned before um, the last episode that I did not believe that would be the case. I think I would have lost if I had to do this using the method that I used, but no, I guess this was enough to complete the campaign. Yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this. Let's check the statistics, and as you can see, I suffered only 16 losses. I don't know, I think I lost like twice as many, but yeah, I do remember some of these units that I lost, especially the Mage of Light. Lost all the sharpshooters that I brought in, and I think I lost all the level 2 or up average archers. Not surprising because I did bring a lot of archers in during the campaign. Lost the marshal, he lost the champion, all the champions, so... Um, so I guess I definitely benefited from their presence, and I 
feel lucky that I was able to get the champions uh, just in time for this. Well, I don't know when I got the Elvis Heroes upgrade to champion, but definitely it was worthwhile. And one Avenger uh, provided some help. And I brought in some... Yeah, I brought in 5 units. The rest of it were recalls. And I think I brought in uh, 3 Elvish Archer, 1 Gryphon Rider for some reason in one night. And that knight survives. And I think that was a good idea to bring in some um, heavy healer. Could have probably brought in 2 more archers in place of one knight. But I think by then uh, I didn't have enough space for the keep. And kills. 58 kills. Wow. Yeah, that was a huge amount of units that they threw against us. The hardest of them were the Herberdeer and Royal Guards. Yeah, these guys, five of them. They're not too bad, but Herberdeer definitely took a bite of our army, especially Mormumu. But I can say that Mormumu only lost to the best of their, uh, best of his adversaries. And he held the line for at least one turn before I could be filled in. Uh, by the dwarves and the other units, so he did his job. Yeah, a lot of horsemen and of course the dragoons. Yeah, dragoons definitely brought um interesting tactical option. Brought in also the arrow attacks that, yeah, they need a number against our own horse units, which I think I lost one or two. Yeah, I lost one elvish rider. And that's it. Okay, so the horse unit survived very pretty well. The entire campaign, um, 68 recruits, 161 recalls. So I spent a whole lot more in recalling. And 31 advancements, which is basically the same as the recalls that I made. Interesting. 50 losses all in total and 381 kills. Wow. Yeah, so this is the final the numbers associated with inflicted damage and taken damage, damage taken. I think that I've taken I've taken less damage than average and got inflicted a bit more. Or was it the other way around? But I think definitely I got two percentage bonus along the campaign. Yeah, so that's how it worked out. Okay. So well, yeah, definitely a fun mission and what I can offer you is to try to use this as a defensive line if you have to defend against the onslaught and try to fill in as much as possible and rotate some of these guys out if they are hurting. They still have a chance to come back and help you guys and put some of the more soft units in reserve just in case. And if they start thinning out using the archmages and the like, uh, try to just finish them as quick as possible. So that your other units can focus on more heavier units. Other thing I can offer you is if you have Mage of Light, put closer to the orcs, such as here, um, so that they can do a better job defending and the orcs come. Although the orcs might just spread out uh, along the line here in order to exploit any weaknesses in your line. And keep bringing more units and so on common red with um, either level 2 or level 1 units in order to maximize the attacks maximize your damage potential and um, yeah this definitely help i think definitely help in defending so use this as a part of your um, defensive line before you yeah move out for the queen and thankfully these guys do not bring in any more units after two turns and the second turn even that they don't bring in a full keep worth of units number of units yeah so you can rest assured that the orcs will not be able to um, yeah, pester you for the remainder of the scenario if you defeat them as quick as possible. So I guess you can also uh, aim at defeating the orcs first. Okay. So the frontline guys should be Dwarvish guys and the Elvish champions and all the guys with HP over 50. Fair game. Um, yeah, HP over 70 is definitely worthwhile even though they might be horsemen. If they get damaged, move them quickly out of the way, rotate them out to heal them. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's it. I mean, just use your common sense and make sure that Lysar helps in one part of the line. Uh, bring in Marshall uh, and healers, spread them out just behind them. 
And I think you do pretty well. Yeah, definitely well because my army really only 31, well, 31 advancement, but I don't know how exactly powerful this army is compared to some other armies that others might bring in here. I think they might have more horsemen, they might do rather well in advancing the Arabish archers and fighters more. I expect other players might have more healers and more mages, so it might change, of course. The tactics might have to change to cater to that special unit. But if I had, like for example, Dorbish Guardsman that uses Spear um, and provides some good defense, then you know you don't even have to worry about uh, rotating them out, I think. They just do really well against the horses and other units. Um, as you can see, I missed out on this unit because I didn't rescue the Dorbish leader in one of the cave missions but one of the yeah abilities here is staff fest and i got this wrong i thought that uh, staff fest allows the unit to link up for more defensive bonus but actually it doesn't even have to do that it resistance are doubled to maximum 50 percent when defending so i mean this guy is these guys are rock yeah vulnerabilities are not affected but maximum 50 percent So let me just go back. Yeah, I mean, yeah, so double. So 20 uh, against Arcane, 40% Blade, 40% Impact, 40% Pure. So it's just going to yeah, be very effective. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I hope that this is basically a good way to wrap up this campaign. So I hope you enjoyed this aside here. And I try to come back with a um, yeah, new title. I'm still working on it. I so hope you enjoyed this. LP of Battle for Mesno, and hope that I can see you next time as well. Thank you for watching, and please stay tuned.